How you doing? It's Sean O'Brien again with Two A Guys in Gear, and we went to the School of the American Rifle uh, class. Um, it's kind of like a AR Armors class, sort of. Um, we got a bunch of clips and videos, and um, we're gonna try to go through some of the uh, some of the stages of the class and um, and uh, you know and how the class was. Um, yeah. What about uh, how much was the class and all that? It was uh, it was two hundred and seventy five bucks, and that included uh, these awesome T shirts. Mm -hmm. um, we got pizza, which was yeah, great. Pizza was uh, nice. Drinks, and then of course the class. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we actually also brought um, most of the students brought a thumb drive with them, and then um, you could actually they would upload for you um, all kinds of uh, different type of uh, armors manuals and things like yeah. that for the AR. And, and one thing that I really liked about it was they actually had an interactive um, AR fifteen. M16 simulator, right? So, which was so cool. I think that alone was almost worth the price of the class. Getting that thing, yeah. I was messing with it this morning, and it's pretty slick. You can actually see exactly how the internals of the AR M16 work. So, right. what I'm going to try to do is get my screen recorder to work, and towards the end of this video, I'll, I'll integrate that into it, assuming I can get that to uh, to all work out. So, but yeah, I think overall it was a fun class, and we learned a lot. I mean, it was an insane amount of info. Um, yeah. Um, the only thing I didn't it's not that I didn't like it it was just it was rough on me was it was a Friday night class oh yeah and working all day and then the class was from 5 30 to uh, like 1 a.m. or 1 30 or 2 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> um, the last few hours were rough rough for me yeah. um, luckily you had coffee though yeah, I know we were crushing it they had yeah. coffee food I mean um, it, it was uh, yeah, it was a nice setup. Yeah, really yeah. nice setup. And the way the course was laid out, I really liked it. It was really heavy on the uh, the PowerPoint and the, right. like the slides. But the cool thing was that Chad had every slide backed up with with real life experience or, or facts, um, tools to pass around, failed parts to pass around, so you could actually see right. or hear or whatever put in your hands what he was talking about on that slide. Yeah, the 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 parts. I mean right. him passing out every individual part showing you this is what happened when this failed or this what to look for exactly. when that failed yeah i thought that was yeah exactly i learned so much um just from that stuff i wouldn't have never even thought of yep that could fail um failed yeah exactly so um, yeah not only that but just things that i, I guess ar armor is checked for which we yeah. had no clue i was totally oblivious to it and we had to check for it. and I actually had a couple of pieces in my rifle that were failed and I had no clue. Uh, yeah. I guess the gas tube was one of them on one of my errors, remember that? Yeah. So, but I guess, you know, we figured it out and I'll replace it and move on. So, um, That's like, and then remember he was talking about the bolt? Mm-hmm. You, you had one of the old style yeah, bolts. Exactly. That, that it was fine, but they were prone to breaking. Yeah, exactly. Um, no clue I had that. Yeah, I mean, you've been running it all these years. Now, <laughs> right. Right. So, right. so um, like I said, there's an insane amount of info. And um, you know, like I think I, I've said it before and somebody else has said it, it's like uh, drinking from a fire hose. There's just so much info coming at you. Right. And some of the info that we covered that uh, that we liked, um, they told us the difference in the AR, I'm sorry, the uh, 5.56 and the 2.23. Uh, we had a hands-on inspection um, from the muzzle to the butt Yeah. of every AR that we brought with us. Every and, part was discussed gauged yeah, inspected yeah, everything gauged, and if you had a failed yeah. part you left knowing you had a failed part and you had right. to replace it um they passed around specialized tools that we'll see in the video here that um we we obviously i didn't they, even know about so. yeah there, there's like three or four tools i'm gonna right. get now oh yeah because of that i exactly. mean i didn't even know that that tool was existed. and realistically some of them aren't even that expensive no some of them is, were 15 and some of them were 50. Yeah. It was, but exactly, yeah, and if you have a, a group no of buddies, you can go in with them, and you yeah. know, I'll split them up. It's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. So, um, but yeah, it was definitely cool. So, um, why don't you uh, watch the rest of the video? We're going to uh, overlay our, our audio with uh, parts yeah. of video clips from the um, from the uh, class itself. Yeah. See, see yeah. how it okay, looks. So we started out the class uh, talking about the muzzle of the rifle. Um, like Chad says, we go from muzzle to butt, and that's what we did. We spent about forty-five minutes to an hour yeah. talking about just the muzzle yep. and and everything that that goes along with it, whether it was the muzzle devices, yeah. um, the flash hiders, the, flash the brakes. Hiders. Yeah. The cuts of the barrel. Yep. Um, um, how to thread a barrel? You know, single right. point threading versus uh, manual threading, or, or, or using a die. 
um, right. all, all that stuff, uh, pinning muzzle devices. I mean, you name it, it, it was there. Yeah, he covered it all in detail. Yeah, it, yeah, oh yeah, extreme detail, and and passed around samples throughout the class. You know, showing right. us this is what I'm talking about. This right here. You know, and um, he actually also uh, told us the importance of when you're threading to have a shoulder um, on the barrel. Or why a shoulder was needed. Exactly. So, which I, yeah, I had no clue. I didn't know that. No, because so. I um, have a kit to thread barrels, but mm -hmm. I can't thread one that takes a crush washer right because there's no shoulder exactly um, and that was a manual die right yep and um you can't ma uh, manually thread for suppressor um suppressors need a shoulder exactly I, and i uh, didn't know that yeah and we um, actually talked quite a bit about suppressors too right. and um which i thought was really interesting how he integrated that into even though it's like an option for the ar right he integrated that into this class and spent a fair amount of time on it and actually we have a short clip of chad uh talking about suppressors so let's take a look at that now all right but what this does since you're not using direct thread and you're not stuck with that thread pattern you can get mounts made for different guns that accept the suppressor so you can get one for an fal you can get one for a g3 get one for an AK-47 and you can move that one suppressor between several guns. I have a suppressor for my AK, mount it up. And from there we talked about the gas system, the barrels, the different uh, twist weights and from 1.7 to 1.14 um, ammo size versus the uh, twist rate and different barrel lengths versus the uh, twist rate. Yeah, and that was actually really detailed. You know, I thought I knew a little bit about that, but I mean, he talked about that for quite a while, and um, it was impressive. You know, yeah. with with everything that there is to know with twist rates, you think it's pretty basic, and it is, but it's not. Right. No, it's especially um, a lot had to do with the the M4 versus the um, you know the A2 or the 20 inch barrel right. um, that exactly. the Marine Corps uses. Um, and then different uh, rates for different M4s for, for what they were needed for. Right, and then we also talked about the gas systems uh, in the guns. There's a ton of information on the gas systems and how they worked. Uh, we talked about everything from different size gas ports and uh, how they have an effect on different types of ammo. Right. Um, special gas systems like the pigtail or the early uh, La France system. Right. And then all the way to the adjustable gas blocks like people are using today. So, and then the thing I, I learned about a lot, I guess, was the gas tube wear. They had no clue to check a gas tube for wear. Right, and we went over that in detail, how they fail, mm -hmm. what causes them to fail, what to look for when they fail. How to check um, obstructions with them that yeah. we used a simple piece of weed eater line for, remember that? Yeah. Which, that's, yeah. that's like a no-brainer, but how many people think of doing that, right. you know? That was, um, yeah, because the little weed eater line came right out the end of the barrel. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and, uh, you know, something too. I always wondered was about cleaning the gas tube. We don't need to. And I never really thought about why, but Chad's like, hey, you got 55,000 PSI or whatever it is blowing through there. Nothing's getting caught up in there. You know, right. and it's and like, I oh, yeah, duh. When we were in, uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, we would sit there with your little pipe cleaner and cleaning them out for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so now one thing that he did have in the class also was a bore scope for checking inside the bore of the rifle. Yeah, that was awesome. Or the barrel. And uh, that was really cool. And everybody got to take the bore scope and uh, pass it around and check all the uh, the barrels of the rifles that they brought uh, for wear or problems or whatever, just out of curiosity. And um, we've got some video of Chad showing um, how that works and all, right. and all that. So let's take a look at that. Lord. This is your focus ring. You'll we'll stick this in your barrel and it has a dial on it. This is a, not, this is a 90 degree adapter. You see the light shooting out of it and it's moving. You can basically spin it around and look at 360 inside your barrel. So you're going to stick it down your barrel and be easy with it. You don't want to bend this or bang it into anything. It's a precision instrument. You're going to look down your barrel and you're going to see what I'm going to show you on the screen. This right there is the throat. That's the transition from the beginning of the throat to the rifling. Can you see it? Yeah. As you pass down, you can see how rough it is. This is a clean barrel, but it's still really rough. Okay, so from there we went from the uh, the barrel assembly and the upper upper receiver down to the uh, lower receiver and buffer tube assembly. And tell us about that, John. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, he went over a complete variety of different things, from the full function test to trigger gauge uh, testing, um, hands-on test inspection of the buffer tube assembly, and the magazine troubleshooting and testing, which usually is on. The last everybody's list to, mm -hmm. to check the mags right um 
I know I number my mags just in case they mess up. Um, I used to not, and when they did, I just throw them in the bag and couldn't remember which one was which. Right. But uh, yeah, I started doing that. And the buffer tube, um, he had one taken apart, and I didn't realize what was in a buffer tube. Um, that was extremely interesting. Yeah, it was. And he passed it around. Everybody yeah, got everybody to see it. Everybody got to see. I didn't know there was little, uh, I guess, weights or counterweights in the buffer tube. Right. Um, and all the different, even the hydraulics. Yep. Buffer tubes. He went over all the buffer tubes. Yeah. And, and the thing I, it's crazy about it is, you know, you and I are talking about this and it took us like a minute to talk about it. But right. that portion of the class was a, a solid hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Who knows how long. Yeah. But it was just, you know, again, so much information coming at you, right. you know. And uh, we do have a uh, we have a short video clip of uh, Chad talking about magazines, so let's right. go ahead and play that now. The magnet tool, what it does, is it has a bevel on it, and it sort of tests the width of the magazine lip. So what you do is take tension off the follower, push it down a little bit, and this works on plastic mags too, and run it right down the back, put a little bit of finger pressure on it. See how it's not going in? It's not going in. That's a bevel on it. If it clears those lips, the lips will spread apart too. One uh, one part of the class, it was probably about an hour long, was just cleaning mm -hmm. and ways to clean, um, how not to clean. Mm -hmm. uh, he used, didn't he use a little um, Harbor Freight parts yep. washer? And Simple Green. And Simple so, Green. So, you know, I mean, a Harbor Freight parts washer and Simple Green is crap that you can get, yeah. you know, just right 30, around the 40 corner. Bucks. Exactly. And you're not out buying the special, you know, gun cleaning stuff. Right. You know, and, and I'll tell you one of the big things that I know Chad has taught so many people, and I know I'm a follower of it now, is for lubricating. Yes. Mobile One. Yep. It's the way to go. I mean, you can buy a quarter of it for, what, six, seven bucks, as yes. opposed to like a little bottle for six and or seven bucks, you know? And, a lot, and what I do is I usually take uh, the empty little teeny bottles. Right that I used to have, a Rimmel or whatever it is, and then I fill those up with Mobile mm, One. That's a good idea. And then throw them in the range bag so I don't have to lug around a big giant court. And I think the only commercial product that he had out there, or the gun product that he had out there, was uh, base tool. So everything else was, um, you know, just something off the shelf, which was right. great. All right, and so. um, I think one of the best parts of the whole class, to be honest with you, was seeing the kids with their fathers. Um, Mine was a little too young to bring, um, and the other one couldn't come. But uh, it was uh, it was great watching the kids be extremely interested in um, in the ARs and and just all the the whole ordeal of the class. Yeah, and we had uh, I guess we had two kids in there. They were 10, 13 years old, something to that effect. Right. And uh, yeah, they were they're just so interested in it, and they they just held their their attention so much. It was great. Right. So and, and like I've said before, I bet you they probably learned more that night. Than they did in a week of public school for sure. Oh uh, yeah, I guarantee it. So, which is awesome, and I'm I'm glad they were there. And it's nice to have the next generation doing this kind of stuff and exposed to it right. as well. Yeah. So, and there was one kid there. His name was Zach. So, oh, yeah, uh, Zach. Yeah, he wanted a uh, I think a big shout out. I think he wants to be a big uh, he internet wants to be YouTube a star. YouTube star like us. Yeah, that's right. We're um, we're B rated stars right. though. So if you can B? make it to A, Zach, you're awesome. Right. Get, get one above us. So can we get your autograph, Zach? <laughs> So, uh, anyways, yeah, it was a great class. Yep. Um, at the end of the class, Chad hands out uh, certificates to everybody, uh, complete with a wax seal, which yeah. is awesome for nice authenticity, yeah. however you pronounce that. And I know, personally, I'm signing up for another class, so it was well worth it. Yeah, so am I. Um, and from my understanding, I'm not sure the names of class. He's coming up with a couple more add-on classes. Yeah, I think one of them was to build ARs. Okay. And one of them was going to be a dedicated cleaning class. Oh, nice. Which would actually probably be really beneficial right and i think his son might be holding that class oh, okay cool i think i could Good. be wrong but he might be doing that class yep. his son was there as well yeah he was one of the assistants in um, the class. both his sons were there oh uh, yeah and his daughter i think Correct. he had the whole and his brother he had the, yeah he had the whole team there <laughs> so all righty well we'll put yeah. some uh links in here for chad's website and his youtube page and um if you like us please subscribe and check out chad see you